the militias attack us at 5 a.m. in the morning when I was 11 years old. We were walking more than a uh, thousand of miles and the number of boys at that time was about uh, 20,000 boys. The soldiers came and just picked up the, the gun and, and pointed it in my stomach. This time, with the January referendum that possibly will split the North and South into two independent countries, there is a chance for peace and a chance for bloodshed. In Sudan now, um, there is a lot of fear. Sudan government have been keeping other communities isolated so that they can exploit the minerals, so that they can rule forever as they dream. But we say this is an end. Until late after a couple of months, the United Nations were informed by the Ethiopian government and they brought out some grants. Where we settled at a displaced camp, the Sudan government had, we were there. So we were attacked again. So we were forced to live following the borderline of Ethiopia, Kenya, and Sudan until we entered uh, Kenya in 1992, Kakume refugee camp, where most of us came from. I lived at Kakume refugee camp for 12 years. I have that home so I'm thinking about seeing my mom because as a kid, you know, being separated from your mother at the age of five or seven or 10, it's sort of home. And when I talk about all this, I break into tears sometimes. When I went for my citizenship, uh, when I went for fingerprint, you know, the machine could not recognize my hand. And then one of my friends told me that it because of lack of nutrition. Because when we were, when we were kids, you know, we didn't have a, a good nutrition because we are refugees. So the machine could not even recognize my hand. And that's why you can see my hand right now, how they are. This is a lack of nutrition. Uh, I was 19 years old. Uh, the life was really very difficult. And I, we were struggling, you know, to learn those, you know, how to turn on the stove. Sometimes we forget, you know, to turn on the stove. You know, we just cook and we leave it there and, you know, it's be on. And sometimes we get, when we get the bill, you know, it costs us with a lot of money. We just go to bed and we don't know how to turn on the alarm clock and, you know, some of those things, you know, like a time management in America. It was not easy for us to live in America. There are the operation, the mistreatment that have been done in the deck that have not, never been had. That the Sudanese people have problems. That the other people were not given the choice of uh, how they live their life. I've seen a lady being beaten by the Sudanese government, it was on YouTube, uh, by the title 50 Lakhs for wearing a pants. And they don't expect ladies to be in pants. Why can't I be allowed to do what I want to do? Want to go to school, want to farm? Want to sit around in the village? Why can't you be allowed to associate with other communities as well? But the Sudan government have been keeping other communities isolated so that they can exploit the minerals, so that they can rule forever as they dream. But we say this is an end. The Southern Sudanese people call it the final work to freedom. Operation Sudan, an organization created to help the victims of the Sudan genocide. Donate now, save Sudan. At OperationSudan.org, you can help give someone their freedom back. All you have to do is go to OperationSudan.org and donate a small portion of your time and money. Please, think about it. Thank you. Please, donate, have a heart. It's the right thing to do. Gonna make a change for once in my life. It's gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. As I turn up the collar.